So in this video, I wanted to talk about the Parker Jotter. And that's because this is one of the coolest, most collectible and most affordable pens sold today. At least, you know, pens that you would collect. This is one of the most affordable ones. So I wouldn't really consider myself a Parker expert given the company's history and how many iconic uh, pens they've released. But I have more than a few jotters and I uh, figured everyone would like me talking through it for a minute. So this is the standard jotter. It is all stainless steel, brushed stainless steel. It is easily identifiable by the kind of short shape, the tapered body, the arrow clip, and uh, the metal button, and this distinct, really serious click. That uh, pen, this pen sells for maybe eight to $12, depending on where you get it. There's many, many different versions, but this is kind of the standard stainless steel jotter. This pen's been sold since 1954, so there's a lot of history to it. And uh, there's a lot of different versions, which we'll get through in a minute. I'll get to in a minute. But this is sort of the standard one. And again, great pickup for $10 or $12. It's a very simple pen. It's really three parts to it. I mean, there's a spring in there but I wouldn't really consider that to be a part. So here's kind of the standard setup. Metal barrel, you can see it is brushed stainless steel. This metal threading here, it's a separate piece from the body. They're, I guess, epoxy or press fit together. I'm not really sure. Then we have the refill. It uses a Parker style G2 refill. Uh, so this is kind of a universal refill shape and you'll know it from the extended writing tip, kind of the shoulder here, and then this spinny piece on top. Uh, you could see this is an ISO standard. It's set by the size and dimensions and all that. It's set by ISO uh, 12757-2, and then the model for a ballpoint pen is called a G2, a G2 refill. That's why people commonly call it a Parker style G2 refill. Then we have the body itself, metal clip, always metal clip, metal button, spring-loaded button. So it's not relying on the front spring. There's a front spring in here, but it doesn't rely on that entirely. This has its own button. And then what a lot of people do, if you're a Parker enthusiast, you can look inside here and you can probably just make out the threading in there. Here it's black plastic. So just note that. The black plastic will tell us something about the pen. One of the last things to look at, or maybe the last thing, is the engraving. It can be a little hard to make out, but we can see this says, it's a Parker logo, a little arrow with a, kind of an ellipse. Parker. Again, the sliding is difficult, but then lastly, we'll see where it was made. This is a newer one. It was made in France. So that is the stainless steel Parker Jotter. Here we have a slightly older Parker Jotter I picked up off an eBay lot. At first glance, it will look identical to the newer one. I'll keep the pen tip out on the newer one. So we'll see they both have that arrow set up. But as we inspect the pen, we'll see there are some subtle differences between the two. The bodies are pretty much identical. They're both brushed stainless steel. And honestly, while this one, the older one is a little bit more beat up, I can't see any real differences. Looking at the clip, we could start seeing some differences. Here you see on the older model, thinner arrowhead, thicker arrowhead. The body or the shaft of the arrow is about the same. Now we see these kind of chevrons here. This newer model has three solid chevrons, like they have like a weight to them. These, on the older one, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I wanna say eight, hard to tell, I guess seven or eight, and they're just lines there. So definitely a difference there. The clips are in build pretty much the same though. You can see it's a single piece with folded 
It's folded over here, single piece down, and it's a single piece onto the press fit clip. So that's all one piece. Here, also all one piece. One big difference you'll see with older models and uh, the older models on the left, you can see it has a flat top, got some gunk in it, but it has a flat top with a little indentation. And inside that indentation is uh, the Parker logo. It's really, really nicely done in there. It's a really clean logo considering it is inside of that little button. And I should give this pen a cleaning, it has some pocket lint or something in there. Anyway, really nice shape. It's pressed in there. It's really clean, folds to the metal. Nicely done. With the newer pen, definitely less complex. No logo on top, and it has a domed top. See, this one is flat. This one is domed. So clearly, they just kind of put this into a metal stamping tool and just kind of extruded it or kind of pushed it through the way you would make like a, uh, I don't know, a metal bowl or a bucket or something like that. The new one has a lot heavier, kind of a messier sounding click. Listen to the new one. Listen to the old one. Let me tighten that down. It's a lot more of a refined click from that old one. I don't know that it's really better or worse, but it really just has a feel of craftsmanship that the new one I would say is, while the made, new ones are made very well, the old ones have a sort of a cleaner build quality to them and clearly more care was put into them. The barrel is essentially the same. Uh, the engraving has changed. We here see it says Parker, there's a logo, Parker. And this one was made in, uh, what's that say? It's a little in, in, I don't know. Can't quite make that out. But here we say, made in USA. So it's cool to see. This is an older one. I haven't dated it, uh, but maybe it's 80s, hard to tell. I mean, it'd be easy to tell if you researched it, hard to tell from the video right now. This one, what I have, I just have original refill in here, kind of old school Parker G2 refill. Inside, still plastic. So this is not what a collector would be looking for. A collector would be looking for one with brass threads in there. This is blue plastic. And if you were to Google that, you would find pretty easily when the jotter had blue threads in there. And it's pretty easy to date these if you want to dig into it. Inside here uh, feels the same as the old one. I mean, sorry, as the new one, but picking it up, it's definitely heavier than the new one. Something changed. Uh, there was more weight to the older ones. And that's not shocking, right? The pens, as they've gotten produced longer and longer, the company has sort of done some cost-cutting measures and reduced materials uh, where it can. I wouldn't say the new one is anyway a bad pen. It's just probably produced a little bit more efficiently than the old ones. And it's not like this thing's gonna break. These things are pretty bomb-proof. But the old ones have a little bit more heft to them and a little bit nicer build quality, which is why you see people collecting them. And this old one, if you were to buy it in really good condition, you could probably get it for $15 online. It's not like you're really spending a whole, uh, like a premium on them. If you really wanted to get old, we have this. This is the Parker Jotter first year. So this is the first year the pen was made. That's in 1954. And you can see this one has some really distinct changes from the newer models. The number one way to identify a first year model is through the grip area here. You can see it's not metal. It's not plastic like some of the other ones. It's actually nylon. And it has these striations, these long lines down it, which is how you identify the first years. One of the interesting things about the first years is it doesn't have a nib protector or a tip protector, whatever you wanna call it. If you have a stainless steel jotter, it's stainless steel from end to end. If you have a plastic newer jotter, it's plastic, but then it has the stainless steel tip or protector at the end. The originals had nylon through to the bottom and no protector here. 
Uh, it's not like a big deal. It's not like this thing, you know, this thing is 50 years old, but it's still in good shape. I guess 60 years old, but it's still in good shape. No problems there. Some other differences with the first year jotter, as you can see, the clip does not use an arrow, it has this kind of indented clip. It's a lot different. It's very simple. It's just kind of a stamped sprung steel, but it is kind of cool. And it's a little hard to make out with that reflection, but you could see it's scooped and uh, has kind of a weight to it, even though it's just a stamped steel. It's a kind of clip I wish more manufacturers still made. Button, interestingly, is domed. So it's similar to how the modern stainless steel jotters are. You can see this one has some brassing on it from wear over the years. That's hard to avoid. Just that sort of wears out over time. And this one has a crazy click to it. Just this spring is like 10 times stronger than it needs to be. And on the up right there, the release, it's really serious. This thing feels like a piece of like military hardware. It has a way better click than any other jotter I've owned. And this thing is obviously the oldest of the jotters I've had. Opening it up, we can see this front piece is, is very simple. It has very tight threading, no metal at all. It's very light. It's kind of a strange choice considering the jotter is being known, known for being an all metal pen. Inside, uh, I just have a whatever refill in here. It's the same uh, you know, G2 style refill that hasn't changed since day one. I don't have the original refill though. And then inside, uh, it's a little bit hard to make that out, but we can see, not surprisingly, that it has brass threads. And again, if you are looking for a used jotter on eBay or something like that, a lot of the collectors that are selling these and people in market will specifically call out if it has a brass thread. And I don't know that the threading actually makes a difference. It's just a marker that you're getting a jotter from kind of the top and most desirable years. It won't necessarily be a first year though. For that, you wanna look for these lines down it. And you could find a really good deal if someone thinks they're selling an old Parker pen and you see these lines. You know, you could pick these up. I got this one in a pen lot. I think I paid $20 for it. If you are into the jotter, there are some other options available. This is a kind of a standard, the most cheap jotter sold today. And this one has a plastic body. It makes the pen much lighter. It's still quite durable. It just doesn't have at all stainless steel build quality. And the top of the upper is basically the same as the uh, newer stainless steel ones. And I think the parts are not interchangeable. So I think the threading is different, but let's see right now. Nope, the threading is interchangeable, so you could see it's the same. So this is the non-stainless steel, this is just a jotter. This one, in fact, I think was called an anniversary edition or a special edition because of this color here, this plastic and this, uh, I don't know what this is, neon orange or coral or salmon or something like that was a limited edition color. The jotter does have some very cool limited edition colors. I would definitely recommend you check back for my video on the Jotter Premier Edition. And this was a 2004 limited edition sterling silver Jotter where the body was sterling silver and had little plastic cutouts in it. This was called the Jubilee uh, 1L, e, e Jubilee Edition. I had one of those for a brief time. I ended up giving it away or trading it to someone that was a really serious Jotter fan. So I just felt like it made no use having this really highly desirable special edition Jotter Premier Edition sitting at my desk. Anyway, this is the plastic one. I wouldn't recommend it. Go ahead and get the all steel one, just a nicer pen. <clears throat> Sorry about that. 
This is a new release from, uh, I believe, 2018. I want to say this is the Jotter XL, the kind of the large Jotter. And it's basically, if anyone had any complaints about the Jotters, usually that it's not a very big pen. If you look at it on the desk here, it's one, two, three, four, about five inches long, a little over five inches. Using this pen, you can see it's about five and a half inches long, but that doesn't really tell the whole story. It was, it's fully a larger pen. It's thicker, it's longer, it's just a bigger pen. And this oversized jotter came out with a lot of fanfare and excitement, but you still don't see that many people buying them. It's a nice pen. Uh, none of the parts are interchangeable because everything is larger. It's not like just longer. It's actually a wider body and a uh, wider barrel. And this is a metal, like an aluminum front piece bonded to plastic. So it's not all metal. And then it has the plastic threads that we expect to see on a newer jotter. These things sell for about $30, $34. Uh, and I, I did a full review on this. It's pretty cool. I, I don't think it's necessary. To me, it's a little bit bigger than it needs to, me, needs to be. I think the jotter is maybe a tad small, but I'm so used to it that I don't really mind. Whereas this one is just unnecessarily large for me. I would have liked something maybe in between the two, but we're kind of really splitting hairs at that point. Lastly, I have a jotter pencil. This is the all stainless steel version. This is an older one. You can tell from the arrow and also that it is made in the USA. You can see it has the uh, little piece sticking out, the little uh, pipe. And as you push it, the pipe sticks out. It's spring loaded. And obviously the lead will come out. So this is a pretty cool pen, uh, pencil rather. And you could find these, they're not too expensive. I will say they are a little fickle. Mine is pretty old and I broke it recently trying to look at it. And you could see this whole piece just like these tabs broke and the whole thing just sort of came apart. It still works, but you have to be careful when you're working with, you know, 20, 30 year old plastic. And this is a, stan stan uh, a standard stainless steel jotter. It just happens to have a pencil type refill in it. And if you open it up, you can see what that looks like. You can see it's pretty old, which it has this really strong, thick, old spring in it. Plastic here. Here are the tabs I broke. This was all sort of built into here. And I was just playing with it and broke those tabs. If you were to pull this off, you could see it has an eraser. And then if you pull out the eraser, you could refill it. It shouldn't do this for the record, uh, like come apart like this that easily. That's why it broke. And you could tell it's broken because it slides out. Anyway, it's pretty rare to break these, just be careful with it. But this is the stainless steel jotter pencil. This is a 0.5 millimeter, it's a pretty nice pencil. Not really one of my favorites because I don't like the click action as much, but pretty nice pencil. You can see this is from the era that has that flat top with the indentation there. So pretty cool. As a sidebar, this is a Schmidt DSM 2006. It's a 0.7 millimeter Parker Jotter or Parker G2 style pencil insert. And what this is used for is getting a Parker G2 style or Parker style G2 pen and converting it into a pencil. So basically you, it's this, this refill, this pencil insert is the same size as the G2 refill. You put it in here, you don't need the spring. The spring doesn't wanna come out, let's try a different one. None of the springs wanna come out. See if it works with the spring in there. Yeah. So you can see now this was a pen a minute ago and now it is a pencil. 
that little piece that sticks out. It doesn't look as clean as the one it was designed. That was specially designed, but it works fine. And it's a pencil. Pretty cool, and that thing sells for about six or seven dollars. Lastly, I want to talk about some of the cool clones out there. And like clones is maybe not the best word, but these are like pens that are inspired by the gyre. You can see some old paper mates. They look a lot like it. This one's actually a twist. It's an old pencil, pretty cool. Not exactly the same thing, but I would say sort of inspirationally, they're the same. For example, this thing, it doesn't have a button. It's a twist pen, but it has a button that looks a whole lot like the jotters. And then one of the closest matches you see from a modern pen is this right here. This is the Odo Rays, and this is a needlepoint pen, and it has kind of an old school refill uh, clip, sort of like the year one Parker, just inverted. And it has the similar, almost the same design as the plastic jotter. So stainless steel on top, brushed, kind of a reddish, nice color on the bottom, nib protector, just like that plastic jotter. You know, if you were looking at the two, you would barely be able to tell they were different. The buttons are, you know, a little tweaked and the clip is a little different. And, you know, the barrel is a little longer on the raise and the raise is a little thinner, but these are two very similar looking pens, looking pens. And nothing wrong with that. It just goes to show you how iconic the jotter is that a brand would go ahead and make a pen that looked even like one of the less desirable jotters. And again, this one does use the needle point, which is very cool. And it has a, a much lighter, much cleaner feeling click. It's a lot more modern, but clearly jotter inspired. Again, look, here's another look at those clips. It really feels like they just inverted this clip and made it into this one. It's very cool. So that is probably more than you could ever want to know about the Parker Jotter. And again, I've had a lot more of these. Some of them sold, sold some of them have traded away. So uh, Jotter is a very cool pen. I highly recommend getting into them. Thanks for watching.